Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Woke by Accident Podcast. I am your host, Jan Washington. This is a weekly chat about socially conscious topics impacting the culture. I would like to extend my gratitude in you listening to this podcast. It means everything to me, and I hope it is clear that this subject matter is so important to me. I care about our people, our future, and making a positive change in this nation. If you have been thinking about starting a podcast or your current podcast needs a little help, we have the solution for you. Today's show is brought to you by Idea to Launch Academy, the only multicultural podcast academy that to date has helped launch over 500 podcasts. Anyone can launch a podcast, but it takes work and a solid foundation to have profitable and successful podcasts that stand out from the rest. You can Google how to start a podcast and publish it, but then crickets, who's going to listen? Carla Wameris, the CEO and founder of Idea to Launch, has put together a course that will help you take your podcast from idea to one launch in 30 days with her proven five-phase formula that helped her reach over 100,000 downloads in less than a year without social media presence and any tech background. You learn how to come up and refine your podcast topic, artwork, recording, editing, marketing, and so much more. Also, when you are part of the course, you become a part of the community of podcasters that all help and inspire each other. Use the link in our description to enroll in the Launcher Podcast in 30 Days 2.0. Let them know we sent you and get the Instagram 101 Crash Course free. Enrollment is now open. And welcome to another episode of Woke by Accident Podcast. Today we have a special guest. Uh, who has a really dope podcast, Michael T. Williams, the host of Real Talk, Real Solutions podcast. Welcome to the show, Michael. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Right on. And I'm pleased to have you as a guest today. Graciously agreed to co-host with me and we'll uh, get into some topics and then we'll talk about your podcast and what you have coming up. So uh, thanks again for joining us and we will get into these topics. So first I wanted to talk about Simone Biles. Um, We love Simone Biles. Um, She we were really excited about her um, being a part of the Tokyo Olympics. Now she made a decision to withdraw from the team competition and the individual all around competition at the Tokyo Olympics, which came to a surprise to many. um, And she did make this decision due to mental health concerns. And uh, we did learn that she had a death in the family and she's made this decision to step away from mental health reasons. Um, We've seen some other uh, high profile athletes make these types of decisions about mental health. Uh, The tennis star Naomi Osaka also recently stepped away from a competition due to struggles with depression. She pulled out of the French Open and Wimbledon this year to focus on her mental well-being. And so, um, yeah, you know, it was was really huge. I mean, it's a huge moment to be invited to the Olympics. You train, you work so hard to being there, but then to step away from mental health, you know, what do we think about that decision? Is mental health that important? What do you think about that? Mental health is definitely important, but like I can look at it from the other side, like I kind of feel like all of that training, all of the other people involved to help you get to the Olympics, because it's definitely, it definitely seems like it would take more than like one or two people to help you get to that level. Sometimes I think you do have to like push through and go ahead and compete like Mm -hmm. once you get to that kind of a level but I also don't want to seem insensitive because I think a lot of times we as black people are told to just push through and we don't get those same comfort as white people get that same sympathy but once you're to that level I feel like anybody should just go ahead and go through with it because if she's 24 now in four more years, if she is fortunate enough to get back, she's going to be four years older, which is mm-hmm. going to, you're going to be competing against like younger 
stats are people. So I think at the moment, you just need to kind of wing it and go with it, at least try. But I mean, I do understand mental health is important and you need to feel your best to like actually do your best. Right. And then what do you think about some of the media that has responded in a negative way? I think, um, well, a lot of them have had something negative to say, basically like, you know, she's kind of like a crybaby or something like that. I mean, that's not positive, you know. No, it's not positive. And then I think it's like a little, like I was saying earlier, like they always want us to to push through and they think that we are supposed to be like really unbreakable when a black person is just a human being like everybody else. And it's sad that in this day and age, you really still have to make that be known, but they want us to just be able to push through anything. And like, have you ever heard of the, the, the theory where they kind of believe that black people can take more pain than anybody else. And a lot of women die giving birth because they think we're able to, you know, take so much pain, like as black mm. people in general. And I, I think it kind of goes back to that. But I, I don't think she's a crybaby. I think she's just a real person. That is so true. And I was just thinking that in my head because I actually, you know, know some girlfriends that have, you know, expressed that, you know, you go to, you know, or I haven't, I'm not a mother, but, you know, just hearing that story from black women that, you know, you go to the doctor and you let them know what you're dealing with and they say, oh, yeah you know, you'll be okay, or, oh, you, you know, push through, like you said, and it's just like, no, our, you know, our feelings are valid, and we th- have the right to, you know, have our concerns um, addressed, and that kind of thing, so, so if someone's telling you, hey, you know, my mental health is not right, I don't feel 100%, you know, then we need to honor that, you know, so definitely, Right. And that and that rhetoric is like just translating into her arena, which is like the sporting arena, that same mentality and attitude. It is. It is. And then, so yeah, like when a, Naomi Osaka stepped away, uh, that was huge because she was hit with that $15,000 fine. And, you know, to even endure that, that was quite significant huge even though she got that barbie money (laughs) with the barbie doll so but still no you can't find that that money (laughs) that's true you can't find that barbie doll anywhere either (laughs) (laughs) i've been trying to but yeah so um but something salute to her for you know making that decision it definitely wasn't easy i'm sure to do that i mean she had her moment she did have an opportunity to do some of those competitions so um you know it's a salute to her for you know having the courage because it probably took a lot of courage to even be strong enough to say that you know and endure the brunt of the negative criticism and all of that so she'll be doing other great things like you said you know she's got four more years she could probably come back or perhaps or some other capacity And that's one thing I never considered, like what it must have taken for her to Mm -hmm. actually walk away from all of that, because she knows, you know, she trained for all of that. She had those, you know, aspirations and it must have took, and I honestly never considered that. So now I kind of look at it differently, you know, for her side of it. Definitely. And then to see what Naomi Osaka went through, you know, and probably others that we don't even know that don't get covered, you know, that doesn't have, you know, the limelight on them um, that we pay attention to. That's why it was kind of cool that uh, big people like Venus and Serena, you know, made sure to publicly acknowledge and support her when she made those decisions. We definitely have to support each other, you know, publicly. So that was dope. Right definitely right so yeah um yeah we'll love Simone Biles so I'm sure she'll be doing some other cool things this next topic should be interesting uh Kevin Samuels the guy everybody loves to hate so he is a YouTube sensation he's he calls himself an image consultant so he's uh image consultant turned into a dating slash gender role guru or dating guru um he has lured hundreds of thousands with his videos 
and he has actually hit the million mark 1.1 million on youtube and he has videos entitled do high value men deserve to cheat and how women can get a high value man do they deserve this high value man and on instagram he has nearly 700,000 followers probably more than that now <laughs> on facebook he's had 125,000 followers twitter uh 13,000 is probably more than that now <laughs> and he's 49 years old he's reportedly worth about three million and I don't know if you've watched the show I've watched it several times his lives and uh people call in and they have opportunity to get advice from him and he's you know widely successful but some of his advice is a little gruff or rough <laughs> And so I don't know if he's sent anybody in tears or not, but he can be a little um, harsh sometimes, but he's very, definitely very popular. Kevin Samuels, recently there was talk about canceling him and that kind of thing, either in support of him or not. What do you think about Kevin Samuels? I mean, I feel like he should definitely stay in existence. Like if he's providing like a good service to people or a good like message to people, like, Sometimes, like, I don't know, like, the council culture thing is kind of weird. I think some people do need to be, some people definitely need to be canceled because there are some things that are just too ignorant to the point, like, where you can't have people spreading stuff, like, out in the world. But I don't think Kevin Samuels is, like, one of those people. Uh, you know, I, I do think, like, people do need to be more responsible with the messages they put out. But sometimes people do need to hear, like, the hard truth because there will be people who will have 10 relationships that don't work in, but they never examine, like, why, even if it's, like, a friendship or, like, a dating scenario, mm -hmm. they'll never question their part and why things went wrong. They'll only be able to see the other person's wrongdoings and not their own but as long as he's not like saying stuff like you know like that that's really harming people like psychologically and hopefully it's like truth he's you know trying to get people to see i i don't see the harm in it yeah i mean i definitely you know per a proponent of free speech and I feel like he's entitled to his opinion and you know even if it is rough which it can be like for example you know he'll say you know how would you rate yourself from um one to ten fresh face out the shower no makeup and a woman will say eight and he'll look her on her little <laughs> image on the zoom and he'll say hmm you're a four, <laughs> you know, and he'll say, you know, how much do you weigh? What's your dress size? And she'll say a 16 and he'll be like, and he's like, which, how much do you weigh? And she'll be like 235 pounds. And he'll say, so you're a linebacker. <laughs> he's like, so you weigh more than most black men in America. <laughs> you know, and it's just like, okay. So that's the kind of rough and, you know, gruff part. And it's just like, does it really take that? You know, is there another way to get that message across that, hey, black women, we want to make sure that we get in shape and, you, you know, eat better and maybe try veganism or be better with our health but no you're a linebacker black woman <laughs> you know like. yeah but is this like a cancelable offense uh, that may not even be a real word cancelable but like i i feel that's definitely not like a message i personally would want to be associated with but the ironic part is you see it it actually made him successful being like that now, I feel like maybe you should not subject yourself to calling in to him, you know, to get that kind of feedback. Maybe that's the answer instead of canceling him, but it, yeah. it does sound like very negative. Right, and I don't think he should be canceled, even though I don't like for Black women to be criticized in that way and he just does it in such a matter of fact way where he doesn't even blink an eye it's like he's not even doing it for laughs and jokes like he's has a straight serious like you're a linebacker 
you know it's just like what did you just call me a linebacker you know and it's just like so I think that's and people in the comments and you can only make a comment if you're a part of the membership which you have to pay to be a member so it just shows you how he is just so making money from top to bottom on this whole thing um but I mean you know big ups capitalizing <laughs> there you go securities <laughs> insecurities totally so it's like maybe we should stop supporting it if you know if you can't yeah. take it. <laughs> there, there are a lot of people I, we should stop supporting like not to get off topic but i think the baby is definitely one of those people that that does not deserve support and it, the for me it wasn't even like the thing about homosexuality the thing for me was the ignorant comments about aids like yeah but then, you know that's another speaking just speaking of Oh no, I mean, yeah, that's been a hot one. And then it's been going on and on and on. And you see the response where people have been canceling him. He's been getting plucked off of festivals left and right. You know, people are saying um they don't want to be associated. So he's seeing the 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 response of those type of comments. So I think he's thinking about you see he's what made a second apology, you know, since making those um really really horrible um insensitive comments that he's had to walk it back what twice now and it's still not working and where did they come from it was so random nobody is addressing like what made him make these comments like so randomly like that's what i want to know like where are they where did this emerge from this rant because you know i'm like did something happen at the concert like you would think maybe there's a backstory we don't know about um Mm -hmm. or a a bad joke that we don't know an inside joke or something somebody and it just maybe went left who knows i don't know but yeah i mean definitely um irresponsible on his part and i think he's kind of learning the lesson and uh it's hitting his pockets you know if he's losing out on Probably about a million dollars worth, like from the list of things I saw that was canceled in in like one month time period. Oh yeah, yeah. It's probably not finished yet either. So I mean, maybe other artists. I know some artists have tried to come out and support him, but I mean, it's not it's not working in his favor. So yeah, you have to be think about what you say. But I guess in Kevin Samuel's case because he knows that he has a committed membership that's willing to pay into you know his youtube account (laughs) he doesn't have to worry about it you know and youtube is not going to cancel him as long as he's pulling in a million followers you know so people love and people love to like i think people love to see like negative content more so than like positive content honestly and that's sad it may not even be true but it's from what I've seen, I think people enjoy those kind of things. It's more, it seems more entertaining to watch like something like love and hip hop as opposed to like a show where people get along. Like they want to see dreams flying. They want to see, I guess it's just to people it's more entertaining than seeing like something uplifting. Right. That's why, and I used to be like a big fan of watching shows like Basketball Wives when they would run across the table throwing wine bottles at each other. And then after seeing how horrible the impact is, you know, the creator of the show, Shani, would sit back like, are we really that bad? Yes. Yes, <laughs> you've kinda... been that way for years. <laughs> it's it's kind of that bad. Let me sit down with the pastor and... <laughs> You know, and she tries to act so oblivious, like she's innocent and above it all to Sonny like, O'Neill in particular. It's like, I've made enough money on this now, so let me. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. But I mean, look, this, it just takes one little moment in media that can either blow you up to the betterment or the negative way you know the baby you know that one moment making those comments and things are you know he's losing money left and right but i've been noticing him for a while like since he's been out he's always in some kind of a and it, there's always some been some issue like so he's been like on my radar for a while where i was kind of like hmm this person you know may not be the best person because he's been he's had so many incidents and I think he, he got to the point where he he thought he was like untouchable because he he got away with those 
other incidents. So he kind of felt like he was at the point where he could do almost anything. I mean, yeah, he didn't he, like actually murder somebody and like yes. <laughs> and shoot out on the freeway. Yeah. yeah. Stole that's, somebody's uh, credit card and phone and that's a lot. All kind of shenanigans. Yeah, punched a fan or something, and he tried to say that she was attacking him, or she tried to grab him or something. Um, yeah, and, and he's like a really young guy too, right? Like he's twenty nine, and so not um, as, not as young as you would think. He's like almost thirty. Yeah, like where you should know better. I thought he was younger. I thought he was probably like 24 or 25, maybe. I thought so too. Wow. Huh. But uh, yeah, these, um, it's interesting how, you know, I guess it takes a certain type of person to be able to handle it, you know. But I mean, I guess he's still making money, probably still. Um, He'll just be because- back to making money. He'll definitely be making money. I think this is just a temporary timeout. Oh, yeah. As long as his name is running, I mean, I'm sure that's making him money just from people <laughs> talking about him, you know. Yeah. Totally. So, yeah. But um, Kevin Samuels, um, yeah, he's, he's, you know, making money. I don't think he should be canceled, but it would be nice if he could be more constructive in his criticism. Like, I don't even think he enjoys like helping people (laughs) you know what I mean like I don't even think it makes him happy I just think he enjoys it when he has like going in on someone in a negative way and has found a way to to just really make money off of that so I don't don't think he should be canceled either because my thing is Mm -hmm. uh, a situation like that you don't you definitely don't have to watch it uh well I guess that's for any of them but I just I don't know I don't see a need for him in particular to be canceled because my thing is when you call his thing when you call his uh phone you you're willing to subject yourself to that because if he's synonymous for saying things like that then more than likely that's probably what you're going to get if he's what from whatever flaw he sees in you he could probably find a flaw in, in almost anybody, I'm sure. Oh, he does. Even like when, you know, someone that's really beautiful and gorgeous and he'll say, how do you rate yourself? And the woman will say a nine. And he's like, well, Beyonce is a nine. So you're saying that you're, <laughs> you're she's right. like, yeah, I am actually am a model, sir. And he's just like, well, <laughs> and it's just like, he like never has anything good to say about anybody. But, you know, like you said, if you don't like it, then don't tune in and don't give him the energy so are your listens are your views or your money right so this next one she's um like your favorite right winger you love to hate <laughs> candace owens uh, she's an american conservative author talk show host political commentator and activist in less than a year she's went from a rising political youtube personality to one of the leading faces um, of the conservative efforts to win back the votes of young minority americans and so i just thought it was interesting to talk about her because um, with some of these social media stand out successes who have a large following and just um, initial thoughts of her. She has made some recent comments, uh, negative comments about Simone Biles, who we were just talking about, but she has a lot of negative things to say about African-Americans. A lot of the rappers, she said things about Cardi B that are negative. Just really the Black community as a whole, I don't know, a quick Google or YouTube, she just um, hasn't had anything positive to say about Black people, really. But she is very popular and she's a fan or I think Trump was a fan of her. (laughs) So what do you think about Candace Owens? She's a very young woman. Like I think she's under 27 or something like that. She's very young, but she's very popular. I, I kind of just feel like the people with those kind of ideals are looking for acceptance from those people. They view those people as like the gold standard. So I feel mm-hmm. like she's willing to say or do anything to elevate herself in their world. Mm-hmm. So it's just, it, it's kind of like a shame because so many elements are there. Like I can see like the self-hatred and I guarantee she probably has and this is a very bold statement, but I stand behind it because I believe it. I feel like she may be, I think she may have some issues. People like that typically have issues with like how they look. Uh, 
you know, of like just about themselves being black, a black person, period. She probably mm-hmm. these I know this is very bold, but like and very presumptive, but I feel like she may want to be white or wish she was born white. Mm-hmm. Um I don't know. I, I, some people like that I just honestly want to say let let's let them have her. <laughs> <laughs> Way, like you know with with a kind of a mindset like that because and if you know that those people always end up wanting to come back because Stacey Dash was doing the same Ooh. thing and I think recently she has wanted to like try to come back to our side because those people know yeah. you know they you they use her for all of it, everything they could possibly use her for so right my opinion is let them have her that's a good point. I forgot about Stacey Dash and um, and I used to really admire her as like an actress and just as a personality, you know, I was like, oh, she's so pretty and, you know, I just loved watching her on TV and movies. And I think that's the extent of it. She's just, <laughs> well, was just pretty. I think that's right. really, I don't think there, there's no death there. And like, then I think she didn't even realize once she started opening her mouth to make those comments that it would affect her in that way um because she had to walk it back several years later you know it really impacted her because black people were kind of just done with her and you know who knew that it affected her that way like I even well this is kind of uh getting off on another path um I saw a story about Alfonso Ribeiro saying that black people reject him just because he's married to a, a white lady and I don't know if like so many black people are in interracial relationships i don't know if i believe that or is he just no. not embrace black people you know what i mean is that what it is <laughs> i think it's like i think his problem is it's very self-imposed i think you feel i think he feels subconscious about it and i think his his career has not gone to the heights that he has hoped since the first prince of bel-air and mm-hmm. I, and I'm wondering, like, it, I've never heard any black person say any anything bad about Carlton. If anything, they like the dance, you know. They like that persona of a Carlton type. I've never heard anybody say anything bad about about him. And I'm wondering, is he is he like referring to black Hollywood, or is he thinking about like the black audience? Maybe he's talking about like black Hollywood won't, yeah. you know. Like, but I think so many people in Hollywood are married to white people. I think it's just totally. all that he's living in his head. Nobody cares like about, you know, nobody cares about that because we're used to Hollywood people being married to a white exactly. person. Exactly. Like from Kanye to the football players, to some of those wins, like, you know, so many people, like we could care less. I mean, we already know how it goes. Um, but I think that maybe he's gotten typecast from the Carlton role, just, you know, that whitewash type of role. And I don't think, you know, he's particularly embraced the black culture. Have we seen him right. supporting any black cause or scholarship or you know we need to support in return not just us you know giving you support what you know we need yeah. it back right so that could be part of it um but yeah that's interesting that for him to feel not embraced by black people and then like um i mean who knows like did tyler perry reach out and he was like eh. <laughs> You know, we don't know. We don't know. Or maybe not. Or maybe Tyler Perry was like, nah, we don't pass on Alfonso. Because <laughs> they may not just have a role. Like, they may not have a role for him. It may, the role may call for, you know, somebody that's tall and, you know, a lot younger probably. And he may not fit, you know, what they're looking for. Yeah, I seem like Tyler Perry would have had a role for him at least. I don't know. Yeah, probably as a lawyer or something like that, maybe. I could totally see that. I mean, I could totally see that. But, or maybe I just need to write that role. You know, I haven't given up on Alfonso. <laughs> I, I have. I have. <laughs> You've already used to uh, Y'all can have him too. Y'all can have him too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think, but when you make those kind of statements, there has to be repercussions. Like, we can no longer, like, hold on to these people who don't want to be in our community, really and truly. And they're only here because they can't change their race. Like, I, we can't hold on to them anymore. Well, I won't. <laughs> Y'all can. Okay. <laughs> well, 
you would think i mean will still cool with him you know so <laughs> yeah if will hasn't kicked him to the curb yet then yeah so no, that's interesting so yeah so we um talked about the baby and <laughs> uh, we got all off topic <laughs> no but it's, it's related it's though it's related it. Yeah. And so, yeah, and I normally don't even spend that much time on pop culture. I usually try to stick to my social justice, but in light of having you as our young millennial friend. <laughs> but no, I guess as far as subject matter, though, on your show, you talk about more pop culture type of things. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and so I mostly... Um, stick to my social justice friendly topics and so um, didn't want to swing your way for the topics for the um, pop culture type talk I actually love pop culture personally but I try to keep it to the theme for my show which brings me to your show Real Talk Real Solutions and so um, when did you launch and what got you into podcasting? I launched I launched my show like maybe like five months ago. And I've wow. always wanted to be, yeah, I've always wanted to be like, I used to want to be like a, a news reporter, a television yeah. news anchor man. And um, that didn't happen. So I don't know. I just wanted to, I was always inspired by like those talk show hosts like Phil Donahue, Oprah Winfrey, like Lisa Gibbons, like all those people from like the 90s. And what, I don't know. I just like journalism and like telling people stories. So that's what it really inspired me to want to start doing a podcast. And that's like how mine kind of works. Like I will talk about anything on my podcast. Like I had an episode about the afterlife, like what happens when you die. And I had a, a medium on there uh, who, I had a medium on my show. She appeared on like the Larry King show, the Oprah mm-hmm. Winfrey show, Lisa Gibbons, Unsolved Mysteries. Uh, she was on there just talking about like uh, just the afterlife and what happens when you die and your spirit and the soul and everything like that. And after the episode, I'm like my mother passed away. So she ended up, she saw my mother and uh, my sister was pregnant with like twins and one of the twins didn't survive. She had no way to know that. She saw like one of the, uh, the twins was there with my mother and he had even like progressed in age and everything as well. And I didn't even know my nephew was like a twin. I went to my sister to confirm that, yeah, one of them did not make it. Mm-hmm. And I talk, I just talk about like the array of issues, kind of just like a, like those old talk shows would. That's a really interesting. I will be sure to check out those particular episodes. Uh, so just getting started in the game, but what are some of your goals or what you want to do down the line for the podcast? really just to be positive on there um mm-hmm. just to be positive and to get my message out to as many people as possible i would love to be on television let that be known <laughs> or okay. radio or something like that. and just try to network and see like you know who i may meet along in the process okay that's cool i mean definitely um youtube would be an idea to do I'm working um, on that. Okay, yeah. that'd be cool. So, where can we find Real Talk Real Solution? You can on Instagram. My, uh, I think the, I think it is Real Talk zero zero six. Okay. On Facebook, it is Microphone Mike M I K E Microphone Mike on Facebook, and. Uh, I mainly do my podcast on Anchor, and I know they have, uh, you can locate it on Spotify as well. Okay, I think that's where I found you, on Spotify. So Yes. Okay, awesome. So, hey, you guys, we will have that link for the Real Talk Real Solutions for Spotify. You said Apple or no? Or... I believe, yes, I believe it is there. Well. Okay, so that you will have either the Apple or the Spotify link. Yes, please, please follow me because I'm trying to get those followers up. I just, like, I want to do positive things. Like, I don't want to get on here, like, tearing people down. Like, I want to lift people up. Like, I would like to talk to people. Like, I lost my mother at, like, a young age. So Mm -hmm. I would like to 
you know, talk to people and hear their experiences. And we can do like a lot. We can do a lot of positive things. We can raise money for people with cancer. We can raise money just for poor people. We can, we really can just change the world. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm totally with that. Are you out on Clubhouse? No, I'm not. Okay. Yeah, you may want to check that out because it's actually open to Apple and Android now. And I've been connecting with a lot of folks on there for the podcast. And it's just really good to spread the word. Like when I drop an episode, I jump in a lot of rooms and a lot of the rooms are like podcast friendly rooms where they'll be like, Hey, does anybody have anything? They, you know, and I'm like, Hey, I got an episode dropping. It's out there right now. Click on my link. And then you see all these people like, okay, I'm following you right now. (laughs) You know? And so that's a couple of follows that I didn't have before. So it's just like a good medium from us so you may want to check it out um yeah so that's dope we will get the link out let's support michael guys um i just celebrated a year in the podcast and game so i'm definitely congratulations thanks sending light to you to stick with it um be consistent and i think you know you'll get a lot out of it so and anything else you want us to know i just, just people just love yourself like in the media a lot of times they'll tell us you know we don't look beautiful we don't let's let go of the words like nappy hair you so black you know this and that i'm i'm be proud of yourself love yourself it is okay to love a black man it is okay to love a black woman just because you get with a white person does not mean you're upgrading or just because you get with anybody you can upgrade with a, a nice black man and you can upgrade with a nice black woman black is beautiful love yourself regardless of what you see on tv what you hear anybody say black is beautiful and just love yourself awesome i think no more needs to be said that's a word right there so all right guys thank you for listening at this time we are going to go ahead and conclude this episode we do appreciate you listening we do invite you to follow us on social media on Instagram, it is Woke by Accident Podcast. On Twitter, it is Woke by. The Gmail is Woke by Accident at gmail.com. And we are available on all of your favorite streaming platforms. Please go out and follow us, share, leave a review, tell a friend. And every time you listen, we greatly appreciate it. Thank you again and take care.